praise the Lord, for the Lord is good, and his mercy, it endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every morning we wake up, <laughs> he's already provided for that day. Amen. Thank God for his mercy and his goodness. Hallelujah. We'll turn around to somebody before you're seated tonight. Give them a great big God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Uh, I uh, quoted the other night something that Jesus said to Dad Hagen. I didn't tell the whole story, but just one phrase that is so pertinent to us. And he said, the important thing is that you minister in the power of the Spirit. Well, if we're to minister in the power of the Spirit, we can't be ignorant of spiritual things. We have to gain light of how spiritual things work. Amen. So turn with me to Acts chapter 10 tonight. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, we're going to look at a familiar passage. Tonight we're going to, I'm going to teach on the tangible anointing. And uh, one of the reasons I want to teach that way, Dr. Summerall said, when you want more light on something, start teaching on it. <laughs> Why? Because utterances start coming. <laughs> And if we're going to minister in the power of the Spirit, we have to be, uh, we have to gain light and not be ignorant of things that pertain to the Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So what was the good he did? He went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. How did he do it? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power through the anointing. Amen. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power and good was the result. Good was the result. And uh, we know that, that he was not born with that anointing on him. Although he was born as the son of God, he had laid aside his mighty glory and virtue. So he came to walk and demonstrate as a man how to go about doing good. And that was, he ended up at the River Jordan with John the Baptist baptizing him. And at that moment, the anointing came upon him to anoint him to go about doing good. Right. Amen. Amen. So there is a difference between the anointing within and the anointing upon. Every single believer has the anointing within that enables them to live the life authored, empowering them. But then there is another anointing that comes upon, especially for those who would stand in a fivefold office to minister to others. And then the anointing can also come upon those who are assigned to certain tasks. And uh, we, we would have to say, no doubt, an anointing came upon Nehemiah for that task. Right? Yeah. So the anointing that is within us and every believer is not an anointing that will increase. But the effects of it can increase the more we yield to the anointing within. We can get greater results. The more we become skillful at cooperating with that anointing within, yielding to it, drawing on it, then we can have increased fruit and results with that anointing. Amen. But the anointing that comes upon can be increased. Yeah. So turn with me to Acts chapter 19. 
Acts chapter 19 and verse 11. Acts 19 verse 11 reads, and God wrought or worked special miracles, not just miracles, special miracles. Amen. By the hands, yeah. by the hands, yeah, yeah, yeah. by the hands. God needs hands. Amen. He needs our hands. Yeah. Amen. By the hands yeah. of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs or aprons. So evidently his hands touched those because it was by the hands. His hands touched the handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. So when it says God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul, what were these special miracles? Diseases departed and evil spirits went out of the people by the anointing stored in the claws that came from his body. That was the special flow. That special miracles were worked because there was a tangibility of anointing that was transferred from Paul into those claws. And the Bible makes a special distinction in that. So that the claws acted as a storage battery for those who were not present, that they still could benefit from that tangible anointing. It's talking about a tangible anointing. That they could benefit from the tangibility of the Holy Ghost by those claws that would act as storage batteries and those claws could be carried to that, the sick or those who were oppressed and that anointing would drive out wrong things. Amen. Sickness, disease is wrong. Demon possession, it's wrong. Demon oppression, it's wrong. It drives it out. Amen. 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 So I'm, I'm inclined to believe that there was a tangibility of the anointing. Yes that went into that cloth. It wasn't just praying by faith, yet you could still do that, but the result comes when the hands have something in them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that anointing can be felt. The tangibility and uh, whether it's felt or not, we shouldn't be led by what's felt. But we can understand that there is a tangibility many times to the anointing. And one thing I would say, don't try to conjure up thinking you feel something. That's not going to help people to act like you feel something or talk yourself into thinking I feel something because it's really not what you feel that matters. (laughs) It's what's produced that matters. And to conjure up that, hey, I felt something when you really didn't, you're not going to produce anything with what you didn't fit with what wasn't there. That's right. Amen. Right. In 1971, a healing anointing came in my husband's right hand. And he was at the Full Gospel Businessmen's World Convention and he uh, saw a woman laying across the steps of the hotel lobby and where these meetings were held and he said to a certain person that was standing there, a certain minister and said, what happened to her? Because he thought she's fainted, she's sick. He said, well, she wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I laid my hands on her and she fell out. And and Ed said under his breath or to himself, oh, I hope God never does that to me. And before he got that sentence completed, a light flashed. And him and about 50 people round about him fell out under the power of God. And Jesus came and put a healing anointing in his right hand. And he ministered under that anointing till the day he went home. Thank God for the tangibility of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ed would describe it like holding a coal of fire in his hand. And there were times he said sometimes he would have to rub his hand to get some seeming relief from it because he would, uh, he would t- sense that so strong in his hand. And uh, therefore you always saw him lay his right hand on 
those he was ministering to. I, I remember, and I don't remember who it was, but I do remember in a certain service, and he had one of his younger ministers who was traveling with him had him to lay hands on the, those in the ministry line, and they were using their left hand. And I think it was because the, the direction the line was moving, it was like more convenient. Ed stopped them in front of everybody and said, what hand is the anointing in? Mm -hmm. And they said, my right hand. He said, then why are you laying your left hand on them? Hello. On. Don't lay the wrong hand. Right. When the tangibility is in one hand, it matters yeah. which hand. <laughs> so he rebuked them for using the wrong hand. They think they could say, well, the anointing's on me. But if it's tangible in one hand and not in another, it matters. This is, don't be ignorant of these spiritual things. And around in, in 2008, I started sensing that anointing, the tangible anointing coming into my hand. I remember, I believe the first time I, I remember sensing it was down in Lima, Peru, and it stayed for like three days. It, uh, it would, I could feel it uh, ebb and flow, so to speak. You could feel it stronger throughout the day than less throughout the day. At first, I, I thought, no, that's not that. Because I didn't want to be guilty of jumping in and the first kind of flinching or first kind of little nerve twitch in your hand, you say, that's the anointing. I thought maybe it's a nerve twitch. It didn't feel like a coal of fire in my hand. And I had heard Ed talk about that coal of fire so much. For me, it felt like a warm glow. Like if somebody just set something warm in there, and it just kind of seemed to, to uh, flow out of that. Uh, and so then at, at different times I will sense it and it's almost like a slight numbness that will start in these fingers and then it moves up the fingers and just settles right in the middle of my, the palm of my hand. And it depends on the strength of it. And then sometimes it will go right up the arm depending on the strength of it. And so you learn to pay attention. Yeah. Then I, I recognize even before that came into my hand, just as ministering. Yeah. And pastors and ministers may feel this too, that sometimes you can feel the tangibility of the anointing to minister just come up on you, where you can feel like a mantle or a cloak or something is thrown, a weightiness comes on you. Yeah. And you can feel the, the weightiness of something tangibly on your body. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, that's the tangibility of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, amen. 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 Other times for me, sometimes I will feel like the whole front of my face, not my head, but the whole front of my face is on fire. Yeah. Other times I'll feel like my whole head is on fire. Sometimes I feel like just my lips are on fire. Yeah. Sometimes I will sense that anointing, it'll just lodge right in my throat. And a lot of times that's when there's to come more of a prophecy or uh, uh, words. And, and, and I was in a service that um, a minister called me out and he said, there's an angel that has a key. And when there's certain utterances that come, it's like he turns a key right here. And I go, that's what I felt. Yeah. That there's something there. Now see, it's not about how, what you sense or what you feel. It doesn't really matter, but you do need to recognize and connect the dots. And I started learning that when there were certain types of manifestations, there would be a certain flow connected to it. And I always talk about connect the dots. Pay attention. The first thing, the first time things happen, the first time I sense something, um, I'll have the explanation or the understanding of what that is, but the next time that happens, the explanation won't come. God expects me to remember what he said the first time I felt it. And I write these things down because I want to connect the dots. And that tangible anointing that comes in the hand can, it seems, can be stirred up. If I listen to teaching on healing, sometimes it'll just, if I, I go, I'm having a healing service tonight, I start watching something that will stir that up. Yeah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. 
why I want to get it flowing. I don't, if I can do something to position myself for that to flow stronger, I don't, I'm not trying to manipulate. It's just that you understand you can do something that will enhance it or something that will diminish it. You can sit around a table and talk about it to people yeah. and it'll start. That's right. What is it? It's stirring up. Yeah. Amen. I can watch someone on a, online or something. I can be in a service where God's wanting to minister to people and it'll start. That's not a cue that I'm to jump up and start ministering. And many times because uh, with Morgan, if she's preaching on a Sunday morning service, I'm not going to be preaching, but I'll be at, at home and all of a sudden my hand will start and I'll go, ah, she's going to minister to the sick this morning because I'm in authority over the ministry. God's going to let me know too. Wow. Not always, but sometimes it's in, it's in order for that to happen. That's not a sign it's for me to minister. You know, and people will kind of ask about that. Well, if it, if it comes, aren't I supposed to do something with it? Not necessarily. Amen. Um, I know this, I have a bend toward music. I love music. I mean, if I hear some good music, brother, I want to start singing. Then other people don't even notice the music was going. If it's something in the background, have you ever walked into a store and there's a certain song going and that, that which you have a bend toward will start stirring. You'll start. And I'm talking about to people who can really have a bend toward music, not who just like it. That's not, just because that started stirring while you were listening to the music in the store is not an invitation for you to stand up and do a solo. Just because it stirred it did not mean here's your platform. And that's the way I liken that tangible anointing. Just because something stirred it, it's not your cue to stand up and start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taking yeah. over or inserting. Yes. Amen. 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 Or show that you're anointed. Come on. Amen. Sometimes I've I've uh, been around somebody, different people that just privately, and all of a sudden I'll sense that anointing when I'm ta- we're not talking about healing, but it'll come and I'll say, why is the healing anointing coming in my hand? I'll ask them. They'll say, well, I have such and such a problem. Well, okay. I ask them. Dad Hagen talked about uh, the way, and it it worked for him with the word of knowledge. He talked about one time he was at his office, in his office, and one of his secretaries was in there, and he said, all of a sudden, my hand started having arthritis in it, pain of it. And he said, I thought, well, I don't have arthritis. Why is my hand hurting with arthritis? And he turned to her, and he said, you have arthritis in your hand? She says, I do. He said, well, you got your healing. Go your way. See, he learned to connect the dots. You have to pay attention to different things because uh, these things aren't spelled out always in scriptures. So I, you say, well, why are you talking to us about it? If, because primarily it's not your layman, they're going to have that. So you say, well, why are you talking to us about it? Because layman must cooperate with yes. it. Amen. Ministers who minister under that, t- that tangible anointing, we need to become knowledgeable with it so that it can operate without hindrance and that we can know what to do. But layman need to know how to receive. I've been in, I've been in churches to where you have a, a tangible anointing in your hand and you go to minister on people and nobody's taking it in. Nobody's taking it in. Nobody. And I know these people don't have much experience with anyone laying hands on them. They don't know what to do. They just walk up and they're just waiting for something to happen. They don't know how, they don't know they're to release their faith and join their faith to that tangible anointing. And it, it's, it's a disappointment for you when that anointing is there and no one took it in. You say, well, that happened with Jesus. Remember, he was in the house and it was so full that uh, they couldn't get the man on the, on the bed in. And it said the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And no one cooperated with that power that was present except one man. 
and four of his faith friends, you know? And that was all that was healed in the, in the atmosphere of the anointing. So laymen have to be taught what to do in the atmosphere of the tangible anointing. The woman with the issue of blood pressed through a multitude to reach Jesus, yet it only records she's the only one who got anything out of the multitude. Why? Because you can be in the, pow- in the presence of power and get none of it. And it is the job of those who need it, of the believer, to receive and add their faith and cooperate with that anointing because no matter how tangible that power is, it will not force itself upon anyone's life. Amen. And it won't force itself into anyone's need. That's right. That's good. That's Amen. Good. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, believers are instructed to lay hands on the sick, but primarily you're not going to be doing that with the tangible anointing. You're going to be doing it in obedience to the word. You have faith in what the word says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Really, the believer is not really to be laying hands on people for anything else. That's the only place that the believer is instructed to lay hands on people. You shouldn't be at home laying hands on this one and laying hands on that one and laying hands on this because your pastor did it. That's not the instruction to the believer. The only place the believer is instructed to lay hands on anybody is to the sick, and that's it. it. Now, can the word of the Lord come to someone? Yes, but don't automatically start laying hands on people just because you've seen church leadership do it. Come on. Amen. And can I take another rabbit trail? (laughs) In the Old Testament, it talks about the spirit of counsel. Before you give out counsel, you have to have the spirit of counsel. Amen. Amen. Believers don't have the spirit of counsel, right. primarily, Amen. for every, everybody else's life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The pastor may come under that, that spirit, of, it's called a spirit of counsel. Yes. That's good. Amen. You got no business calling up your friend or calling the loved one in the church and giving them your counsel because you're a staff member or because you're a congregation member. You don't know what the pastor has said to them. And your counsel, if it's not under the spirit of counsel, will bring confusion into people who call people just so they can find someone to hear what they want them to say. The spirit of counsel is not in everyone's mouth. And just because you have an opinion, that doesn't make it the spirit of counsel. (laughs) Everyone has an opinion, but not everyone has a spirit of counsel. And people's lives have gotten off course and people counseling people on their finances, telling people how to run their finances, how to raise their children, how to do stuff, and they do it without the spirit of counsel. And they're going against what the Holy Spirit many times is trying to work in someone. Amen. 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 So just because you see your pastor lay hands on people, that's not an invitation for you to do it other than lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. God's not telling you go imparting people. Don't do that. If your pastor ever has someone, because there have been times that we would have people up here that after a service, if you need the prayer of agreement, we'd have people come and pray the prayer of agreement. Then I'd see them start laying hands on the people. No, I asked you to pray the prayer of agreement. I didn't ask you to lay hands on the people. You can pray the prayer of agreement, but I didn't tell you to lay hands on the people unless it's for sickness. You can lay hands on them, but you can't lay hands on them for their business. Because now you're going to try to impart, Uh and you're not authorized Uh to impart. You're not instructed to impart. You're instructed to lay hands on the sick. Don't take your liberties because what you see someone uh, anointed to do is not an example for all the laymen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we got to be taught. We have to be told. You think, well, I'm a believer. Yes, but you need to stay within the believer's uh, authority. And that's different than uh, uh, the fivefold minister's authority. Praise the Lord. 
But sometimes it, with these matters of tangible things, these things of the spirit where there's not a scripture that spells out specific things, you have to just kind of, through experience, learn some things. And you want to listen to people who have more experience than you, know God better than you, walked in this better than you, still in the middle of the road, not in a ditch, balanced. And it's good to discuss these things. Yes. Ministers, Dad Hagen would talk about how sometimes these, old, these seasoned ministers and younger ministers would get together and they'd sit and have conversation in front of the younger ministers and they'd hear things just from experience uh -huh. and uh, how it would help them. The reason why we discuss these things is because we only know in part. That's right, that's right. We only have a part, but if we get together to some, somebody else who has a part, yes. and then another part, you get more parts. Amen. 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 So a couple of weeks ago, I don't know how, a couple of weeks ago, I called Pastor Jay and I said, I, I want to talk to you. Why? Because if I can find somebody I can talk with, we can pull that thread on each other. And I want to, I want to get some utterances and some, some handles on some things with this. Because of having more experience with it, I want to label things right as these experiences grow and increase because they should be growing and increasing with all, all of us in a measure. Amen. Amen. And so I had talked to him. So some of the things that I'm going to say tonight came out of our discussion together. And uh, praise the Lord. I had, uh, I had been at home and um, it was before a, a miracle crusade that we were doing our own. And, and uh, all the week before the miracle crusade, all throughout maybe three to four days, not consistently 24 hours, but for a good chunk of time every day, that tangible anointing just in my hand, just in my hand. Then you get to the miracle crusade and nothing. <laughs> You're going, I thought because I'm sensing that in my hand for days ahead, I thought we're going to have a wing dinger of a, <laughs> you know, that we're really going to have a demonstration of that. And then you get there and nothing. It was almost silent. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in talking about this, Pastor Jay and I, uh, th th this statement came out. Sometimes that anointing is just a confirmation you're anointed to do what you're doing. Amen. And because the miracle crusades are a, a bit of a new arm of ministry, there is God confirming yeah. right before you go. Yeah. See what I say, connect the dots. Pay attention to what's going on around the time you're sensing these things. Because there was nobody in my house to lay hands on. God wasn't telling me to lay hands on anybody. Dandy can only take so much. <laughs> Dandy's my dog. <laughs> so I learned to just pay attention to it. Uh, Dad Hagen said that there were certain tangible ways, and I don't want to specify, I know he articulated it more clearly, but I don't want to bring that aspect of it up tonight. But there were certain manifestations that would happen in a service that were beyond just him feeling that coal of fire, or he would talk about it felt like a warm glow at times in his hand. But there were manifestations beyond that, and he said uh, other people, he saw it in the, healing, in the healing revival, they would have that particular manifestation, and they would start showing it out, and, and people would get, ah, oh, you know, it would draw attention to the man. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Hagen said, that manifestation did not come in my hand so that I could show the people. That's right. It came in my hand as a confirmation that uh, he was anointed. Amen. And he said, when that certain manifestation would happen, he said, I'd put my hand in my pocket so no one would see it. Amen. But others would show it. But he said, he, and Dad Hagen, this is the safety of him. He was so safe not to draw the attention to him. It's, it's great to draw the attention to the anointing. Amen. But if you show some things that shouldn't be shown and tell some things that shouldn't be told, right. then people start looking at the man and start getting impressed with the man, and that's a danger. That's right. That's right. 
that's not only a danger, that's wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we never use that anointing to draw attention to ourselves. That's part of the safety of it. Yet you do have to talk about it in a measure to teach the people. There are so many times that I'll sense that anointing in my hand in a service, I never mention it. Why? Because I'm not trying to get the people to think I'm something spiritual because I guarantee I deal with my flesh and my mind just like you do. And I don't want people to think that there's a, that I've left the, the, re, the human realm. <laughs> but people can get that when they're young, especially spiritually young, you know? And so I don't talk about it every time just because it's not necessary. I only talk about it when it's necessary. Amen. Turn with me to Luke chapter four, Luke chapter four, verse 16. And Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read, in verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. I always appreciate this. Here he was, this verse in manifestation, but he still took time to open the book. And he still took time to find the place. It's, it's fine to quote scriptures, but it doesn't take the place of opening the book. Not legalistically, but in the sense of always value that you get to find the place. And he found the place where it was written in verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus told the people that he was anointed. Then he listed the job description of that anointing. This is what the anointing was to work and accomplish. What he was anointed to do. He was drawing the attention of the people to the anointing. Why? So that they would release their faith in it. He told Dad Hagen on one occasion. He said that was the first sermon I preached in every city because the people won't have faith in the anointing upon me if I don't tell them the anointing is upon me. Amen. So evidently, a tangible anointing has to have faith joined to it. It won't work apart from faith. The tangible anointing needs the faith of the person that is looking to receive. Amen. Um, Jesus, in quoting the rock wall vision that Dad Hagen referred to, Jesus told Dad Hagen in the Rockwell vision that he said when he anointed him with healing power, he said, this anointing won't work unless you tell the people that I appeared to you, that you saw me, that I put the finger of my hand into each of the palms of your hands. In other words, just because it's there, it won't work unless we handle it right, Right. unless we inform the people, amen, Amen. and he, so Dad Hagen always did that. He had to tell them why, so that they would release their faith, not so they would be impressed with him seeing Jesus, but they needed to know this was of Jesus. If they reject this anointing, they're rejecting Jesus. If they receive this anointing, they're receiving what Jesus has for them, not just what a man has for them. Amen. Amen. So that healing anointing is God's power. And Paul tells us that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but that your faith should stand in the power of God. Any flow of God's power has to have faith joined to it for it to, con- for it to work Amen. for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you could say this, that the tangible anointing won't work randomly. No. That's right. In random locations, 
in random settings. Yes, yes. Even if you sense it, and I'm talking to those who may have a tangible anointing, you can sense it in your hand. If that's a random setting, it's not going to work. No. Right. It's not going to flow out to right. someone. Right. So just because you sense it is not a sign for you to go around and lay hands on right. people that are in proximity to you. Right. This anointing has to have faith joined to it. You can be at the relatives for Christmas and half of them not like you. (laughs) And that anointing, even if it comes in your hand, that's no sign for you to start laying hands on Uncle Herb who don't like you. (laughs) Unless God says something different to you, you know, certainly. What he says can always guide you, but otherwise, this anointing has to be received. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. Hebrews 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on under perfection or maturity not laying again the foundation. So he's talking now, what are the foundation principles and truths? The foundation of repentance from dead works, the foundation of faith toward God, and the foundation is the doctrine of baptisms, three uh, plural here. Look at this, and the foundation of laying on of hands. There is a ministry of the laying on of hands. That's not every believer. That's not lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's not what this is referring to. This is for someone who has a ministry of the laying on of hands, and that's not even every minister. The tangible anointing is going to be... When somebody has a ministry of laying on of hands, primarily they're going to have a tangible anointing. And it's not just for the sick, it's a ministry of laying on of hands. Not just ministering to the sick. Well, Pastor Nancy, if it's that tangible anointing isn't for the sick, well, what's it for? Well, uh, Romans chapter one and verse 11, I'll just quote it. It says this, for I long to see you that I may impart. There are impartations. What are the impartations for? That I may impart to you a spiritual gift to the end or the end result being that you're established. Amen. You can be called, but you have to, have, you have to be established That's in right. some things. There's impartations. And I can tell people who have been around who their divine connection is and when they've received impartations, there's, there's an acceleration with them. Yeah. Yeah. People who are behind in their impartations, you have to explain it to them four and five times before they even kind of halfway know what you're talking about. They're lacking on some impartations of even what that, of the light that, that comes out of your flow. Well, that's through the laying, that's through the ministry of the laying on of hands you, you impart to people. So you see us impart don't, don't every pastor go home and impart in the, under the same right. approach. Right. Now, don't misunderstand me. God said something to me years ago. I would at different times, especially I remember doing this when we had the tent on the property because we were in a tent before this building was built. And sometimes I would say, the, I'd just say, all the ushers, I want to just lay my hands on you and bless you. Mm-hmm. I'm not imparting. I'm just blessing them from my parental position of the pastor. God said to me, and I started doing that because the Holy Ghost said to me. So every time he would prompt me to do that, I'd take maybe the children's workers and say, I just want to lay hands on the children's workers and bless them. Well, uh, I would do that when the Holy Ghost would prompt me. But one day the Holy Ghost rebuked me and he said, You are the spiritual parent of this congregation. 
He said, as a parent at home, can't you lay your hands on your kids anytime you want? And I said, I can. He said, a pastor has the same right. You don't have to wait for me to tell you to bless your congregation. You're authorized as the parental role of this local church to bless the people anytime you want to. Now that's not the ministry of the laying on of hands. That is just simply the authority of the pastoral office. Does that make sense to you? So pastors, do that, do that. Do that. I remember something that I heard a pastor quoting Oral Roberts I, years ago. He said, Oral Roberts used to say, he said when he would get together with ministers, he would say, lay your hands on the people. People long to feel the touch of their man of God. That's, a, that's something good. We need to honor that. It's not us. It's what flows through our office into their lives. Amen. Amen. So the ministry of the laying on of hands includes imparting that you lay hands on to impart. Last night you saw that. Amen. Amen. I remember the first time I remember where I was. I remember the meeting and Ed was there and I saw Ed impart to ministers all the time. And the Holy Ghost said to me, impart to ministers. I thought, I said, oh no. Oh, he means Ed. So I said, he said, impart to ministers. So I'm thinking, Ed, you're the one that imparts to ministers. Would you come up here and impart to the ministers? He said, no, God didn't tell me. He told you. And I go, oh, shoot. (laughs) Because to me, that was off limits. That was like, but there again, I didn't know within a few years he'd go home. And there would be some other things God would move me into. But I tell you, there was a reverence for that. I didn't want to do it. Not out of disobedience, out of reverence, for that's a sober thing. The next thing that is in this ministry of the laying on of hands, God said to Dad Hagen, the same anointing that heals also fills with the Spirit that you can lay hands on people to be filled with the spirit. And Dad Hagen, remember he'd talk about the success that he would have as he traveled to these churches. He said, we're just a few in the church would have the experience of being filled. And he says, when he would go, everybody in the church, people that have been seeking the the Holy Ghost for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. He said, my best record is somebody had been seeking the Holy Ghost for 50 years. Well, when Dad Hagen came, they received, why? Because he had a ministry of laying on of hands. And for those people who were difficult cases because they've been entrenched in their doctrines and things, that there was a, an extra help for them. And they would be filled with the Holy Ghost. Another one is to bless the people. And this is not just the pastoral office blessing the people. This is blessing the people through the ministry of the laying on of hands. And as Jesus would, he would have the children come and he would bless them. He'd put his hands on them. And then you remember before he was taken up, he lifted his hands, Amplified says, and he invoked a blessing on his disciples. He did it through his hands. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, was, uh, I had gone to visit on one occasion someone who was terminally ill and uh, they, were, they were still, as best as they knew how, they were believing God to be raised up. But they were within days of going home to be with the Lord, and I knew that they were going to go home. So when I went to visit them, I sensed that tangible anointing come in my hand. To see, if you don't understand that, you're going to go in there and tell them, that tangible anointing is in my hand to raise you up, because that's what they, they still had not resigned themselves to leaving. Till their last, they were believing God to raise them up. And here I am just a couple days before they go home to be with the Lord, that tangible anointing comes in my hand. If you don't understand these things, you're going to mislead them. And then you'll hurt your faith because you th- you'll lose confidence in this. Why didn't it, ha- why didn't it work? And you'll start questioning God. But see, uh, I was there under the ministry of the laying on of hands. What? To bless to bless their departure, right. not their staying, oh, not their healing, oh, to bless their departure. Amen. Yeah. Good. 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 
Does that make sense? And if you don't understand that, you'll think God failed because they weren't raised up. And I knew it was not for them to be raised up. It was to bless their exit. Well, praise the Lord. If you've ever watched any of Catherine Kuhlman's meetings, you know what she would say? She'd say, once you realize you're healed, get out of, the, get out of your chair, come up, come to the platform. Well, and then they'd come up and they'd testify to healing and then she'd lay hands on them after they're healed. That's right. Well, why'd she do that? She's blessing them. Yeah. They'd fall out under the power and it was something that was an earmark of her ministry. And it was something that, you know, really introduced some things into that charismatic movement, right? Well, she wasn't laying hands on them to heal them. She was not laying hands on them under a tangible anointing. She was just blessing them. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Um, other times I sense in my hand, I'll sense a tangible anointing. There's nobody around. I'll sense it when uh, God's wanting me to pray about something. There's a leading to pray. I use it almost as a word of knowledge. When I sense that, I go, oh, I need to pray about something. You go, what about? I don't know. I've got to pray to find out what, it's a, what that power is coming in the manifestation for. And then in reading this, because see, my thing was I had to, I had to find out for myself how it work, operates through me. Now, I heard my husband, and any, anytime I heard him talk about it, it was always in connection with laying hands on the sick. But one time I heard him say that anointing's been in my hand, I'm gonna impart to the people. So then I knew it was for impartation, but 99% of the time when I heard him say it, it was always for healing. But after he went home to be with the Lord and I couldn't ask him these things and I started having more experiences in this, I, I didn't just assume the way it operates through me is the way it operates through him or for the purpose of it. And I started recognizing that uh, I would start praying and while I was praying, the anointing would come in my hand. Well, what is it? It's just power manifestation. It's not healing power. It's power in manifestation. Well, that's a good thing to have power manifestation when you're praying. Amen. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Then I was reading something when um, Dad Hagen had the experience of that vision where he was taken to heaven, the rock wall vision, and Jesus anointed him with healing power in his hand. And he said this after that experience. He said, my hands burned for three days just like I had a coal of fire in each of them. And I notice it's normally three days when it will come. It's interesting that I noted that it was three days. Then he said this, now when I wait upon the Lord in prayer and fasting, the same anointing comes upon me again. He's not laying hands on the sick. He's not ministering to the sick. He says, when I'm in prayer and in fasting, when he's in the presence of the Lord, power comes into manifestation. Another time that I've noticed and I say these so we can identify what to do when these things happen. Now, maybe it operates with you differently. You gotta find out, but let me tell you my part. Yeah. It might help you with your part. Another is, yes, I'll sense it when I'm to minister to the sick, but I'll sense it when I'm to pray. And sometimes if, if it's in my hand and I'm out and about and I'm doing something and it just stays and stays, I go, I'm gonna have to find a place to pray. And you go, well, is it for prayer? I don't know, but let's try it. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to experiment yeah. right. with these right. things of the spirit yeah. right. in a way that's safe, you know, but, yeah. right. and uh, another, that, another time that I notice when that tangible anointing will come into my hands when an angel's present. Because uh, I was sitting, and you say, well, how did you first learn it? Well, I was sitting in the back room several years ago and uh, I sensed an angel standing there and God told me what that angel had come for. And when he said that, my hands started burning. Well, so see, I pay attention to that. Right. Connect the dots. Right. Amen. So sometimes when that comes into manifestation, I check, is there an angel? I check in here. I'm not trying to see something, but I want to be sensitive. If there's a presence of an angel, I want to respond. Amen. Praise the Lord. That tangible anointing for me acts as a word of knowledge. Let me explain it to you this way. 
Sometimes after a service, let's say I taught or I did something in a ser- had a flow in a service, and I'll sit down. I've turned over my part. And all of a sudden, that, there will just be a flash momentarily of that power in my hand. I'll feel it. It'll just flash. And then it's gone. Well, I'm already done ministering. If you're not careful, you'll think God wants you to get back up because the service isn't dismissed. The pastor's up there closing. This has happened to me many times. Well, why does it flash after you sit down after you're done? Because I got a clear, a clear in my spirit that I'm done. Because yeah. I check my spirit, am I done? Yeah. And then once I get that, I sit down. Well, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't pay attention and connect the dots and you sense that, you'll think you're supposed to get back up there. Why do I sense it after I sit down? Because God's already on the next service. He's dealing with me about the next thing. Why? He's in front. He's not behind something. He's already on the next thing. Next go around. Well, I got another service tomorrow night and I already got direction. Wow. It acts as a word of knowledge. I know I'm to minister by word of knowledge the, uh, regarding healing. You say, how do you know that? I just sensed that the first time I, I, the first time I felt it and then I remembered it and apply it every time. When there's just a flash, I know he's, it's a, it acts as a word of knowledge for the next service. Sometimes I'll maybe on a, let's say it's a Tuesday afternoon. I got a Tuesday night service. I'll be in my hotel room. It'll just flash for a moment. I'll go, okay, tonight, it acts like a word of knowledge, I'll be ministering to the sick. Well, my normal plan is this, is I will uh, teach first. Uh Why? Because that's the safe thing to do. Teach first. I was in a church and uh, on Saturday afternoon, uh, I hadn't done my first service there yet. My first service is going to be Sunday morning and Saturday afternoon. I flashed in my hand. So I go, okay, tomorrow morning. Because yep. normally on Sunday mornings, I don't minister by word of knowledge <clears throat> with healing because a lot of times that's just not the flow right. that's for that service. Right. And so uh, I go, okay, I'll minister by word of knowledge uh, regarding healing. And so I intended, I'm sitting there in the service the next morning and I intend, God knows I I caught that cue. I caught that cue. And I have to remember. I don't get up there and forget it. Many times if I have to, I'll write myself a note because what he says matters. It's easy to miss your cue. And so I will make sure I remember it. Well, on this one particular occasion, I never had this happen, but see, I learned every time I have a, something a little bit different experience, I pay attention to it. So I'm planning on getting up and teaching first, then after the teaching, I'm going to yield to the Holy Ghost in, the, in that arena. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna set my spiritual antenna up uh-huh. to go that direction. Yeah. Well, right before, right while the pastor's introducing me, it flashed again, mm-hmm. and I thought, now, I know I'm to do that. <laughs> Why did it flash again? Because he wanted me to do it first before I, pro- before I talk. He's, he's instructing me, do it now. Right. Amen. But see, you have to have your spirit open. Don't get locked into what you... Right. Right. Always keep your spiritual antenna up in case it's, it's a bit different instruction with you. Amen. So I knew, okay, get up and start with the healing service. And it proved out you know, and we just, and then after I did that, then I taught the word. So that's why he gave me a bit of an additional uh, leading with that. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Now you say, is it right to treat that as like a word of knowledge? Well, it see, it would just flash in my hand. Remember what dad Hagen was told by Jesus. He said, at, when he was up in heaven and he anointed him with healing power, he said, if you put your hand on the front and the one hand on the back and the fire jumps from hand to hand, you know there's a presence of an evil spirit. That's a word of knowledge. Based on tangibility of the anointing. We'll see, you have a scripture for that? No, but we have experience of men and we add our parts to it and then we start understanding our part when we pay attention to how their part functions. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jay said this so, so well in our conversation. He said there's a difference and we know this, there's a difference between 
being healed by, from, with a tangible anointing and being healed by gift of the Spirit. The tangible anointing has to have faith attached to it, but a gift of the Spirit doesn't. Well, see the woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. She kept saying it, she used faith. And Jesus felt the power, that virtue leave him. He, there was a tangibility of the anointing. Why, because faith made a demand on that tangible anointing. But then when he went to the pool of Bethesda, and there's a man there, wilt thou be made whole? He, and the man answers, I have no one to put me in the water. That's not what Jesus asked. He didn't ask him, do you have somebody put you in the water? He says, will you be made whole? All he had to say, yes, I want to be whole. That's all he had to say. But he didn't. He had his mind on the water. And Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he did. And then later he was asked, who told you to carry your bed? And he said, that man, I was healed. Well, who is he? I don't know. He never heard, he didn't know who Jesus was, never heard a sermon. There was no faith there. It was all a gift of the Spirit. That wasn't tangible anointing. That was a gift of the Spirit, and it required no faith on the part of the one. But then he did have instruction later go and sin no more. Jesus found him in the temple. Go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Remember that. Um, I've heard Richard Roberts and you know, I, I so value his ministry. My, 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 how the body of Christ in him has a developed, a developed minister in his office. He's precious in his office. And that evangelistic office, such a purity flow. And uh, in listening to him, uh, he would talk about, he would tell us even stories and even his daughter said, she says, you go to a store with him and he's got like heating lines around him. <laughs> well, that's kind of about that evangelistic. Out When they're out among the people, you know, there's just a drawing with that evangelistic anointing that you won't maybe see that operate the other way with other fivefold offices. And uh, so in, I, I, I texted him and because I, 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 I wanted to get some clarity of how it functioned because he had said to us in the back room, he said in the 70s, you know, his dad was on television uh, weekly and uh, everybody knew who Oral Roberts was. I mean, it didn't matter what denomination you, it was just part of your, your channel watching, you know? No, are you TV singers? That's something, you know? And, um, Brother Richard made a statement in the back room because they did a study and they said his dad and that ministry had 90% re recogn recognition, or is that the word? Recognition. Name recognition in the United States. That means 90% of every American knew who Oral Roberts was. That's an amazing thing to think about. Well, because of that, People know who Richard Roberts is. They grew up seeing Richard Roberts with his dad. Right. Right. And so now when people, when he goes into stores and his daughter said people just crowd around him, you know, basically wanting him to pray, it's not because he asked them. Right. It's because they recognized him. And they initiated. He was saying that, uh, you know, he, he's so precious. He loves people. Oh, he's, a, he's such an example for us in this. He was talking about he was going through the Chicago airport. And I don't know if you've ever been there. Those, those escalators go deep under that tunnel. I mean, they're very, they're very, um, the angle is steep. And he said he was either going down or going up. And another lady was on the opposite, going this way, and she saw him, and she said, Brother Richard, I've got cancer, pray for me. Across, they're passing, and, that's, and he reaches out his hand, he said to her, and says, I curse that cancer in Jesus, and dry up in your body. Well, see, you shouldn't do that. Because nobody knows you. He's a recognizable figure, so when people see him, they know what he's associated yeah. with, and they release faith. Yeah. 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 
They're releasing faith by that request. I shouldn't do that just because I feel something in my hand. I'm not recognized. And it won't do any good because they won't release faith in someone they don't know and someone they don't recognize. And Jesus told Brother Hagen, this healing anointing won't work unless you tell them. Amen. They have to have some knowledge about you. Amen. God doesn't expect anybody to receive from someone blindly. Know those who labor among you. That's right. Amen. Amen. He's a recognizable figure. So he can get by with stuff. So if you just hear him do stuff, that's not, oh, oh bless God, he does, I can do it. No, you can't. Amen. Then let me read to you Matthew 14 and verse 34. And Pastor Jay brought this verse out. I loved it. In connection with Brother Richard. Let me just read it to you. Matthew 14, verse 34 through 36. And it says, and when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of Jesus, the men of that location had knowledge of Jesus. They sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. Jesus didn't go after these people. They came to him because he was a recognizable figure. They heard of him. Yes. They might have even been in some of his services before, but they knew he was there. He was recognizable in verse 36. And they besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. They recognized him and they knew what, flow, what flowed from him and they wanted a piece of it. That's right. And that's what you see with Brother Richard. They recognize that ministry, that name, and it's earmarked and joined to the healing ministry. So when they're out in public, it's appropriate for him to minister to people in a way it wouldn't be appropriate for the average believer. So I contacted Sister Pat Harrison. I start, let me get a part. Dad Hagen's daughter. And I said, did you ever see your dad out in public, just in a public setting, lay hands on people? She said, never. Hmm. Now he had a strong, tangible anointing. Then she texted me back and she said, now I'm not saying that we won't see things like this in this era, but I never saw him do it. Meaning this, just because he sent something was not his instruction to do something. If you're going to do something, you need the leading of the spirit on that doing. Amen. And really, when it says they heard of Jesus and they started bringing their sick, really, that's when they see Brother Richard Roberts out in the public. The Bible says, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders. Well, he is an elder in the church. He's an elder in that healing ministry. He's an elder in that evangelistic office and they can be in the grocery store and see him and call. Amen. And he's, so, he's such a, a statesman and such a gentleman in this that he says, I won't touch their body because I don't want to impose myself and violate personal space. He says, I'll just reach my hand in their direction. Uh -huh. He said, that's appropriate. Sure. But he says, not appropriate to just touch their body and, you know, jerking things around. And <laughs> Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You say, then why does that anointing come in your hand if you're not supposed to do something with it? Brother Norval Hayes made this statement. So great is God's longing and desire to heal that when, the pre that when in the presence of sickness, that anointing will just come into manifestation just because it's God's longing. It's not God's instruction. Praise the Lord. We were in a, an airport in Russia I believe that we were in Moscow, Ed and I, and um, <clears throat> we were in the security line. And you know, when you're in another country, you mind your P's and Q's. Yeah. You, might, you might think you something as American, but they don't. <laughs> you know, you don't go over there demanding your rights and anything. <laughs> your right is to fall in line. That's your right. <laughs> And so we were in line, minding our P's and Q's. We're going to behave. Anything you say, yes, 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 I speak Russian, yes. <laughs> Whatever you say, that's what I do, <laughs> you know? 
Well, we do that in any country, not just, you know, Russia. You just mind yourself. And so I'm, I'm in line in front of Ed, but I'm turned around with my back to the front of the line and I'm talking to him. And so he's just standing in line and I'm talking face to face. And then he said, hmm, that healing anointing started burning in my hand. I said, look behind you. And they had just rolled up uh, somebody in a wheelchair and they were dwarf. I mean, their, their body was very tiny, but they were curled up and twisted in that chair. They looked maybe in the face, maybe 25. They couldn't have been over this tall and they're just twisted up in that chair. Well, I want to learn. And yeah. since that healing anointing is just burning, he said, like fire in my hand. Mm. And I said, are you going to lay hands on him? Are you going to pray for him? What are you going to do? He said, no. And I said, okay, I didn't ask anything else because when Ed's a bottom line guy, don't keep asking him questions. He will cut you off, yeah. cut you off. <laughs> so I didn't ask. But what was that? That was the longing of God that there was a need and the gift to meet the need was present, but that doesn't mean the faith to receive right. the gift yeah. was present. That was just the longing of God. He's always got help ready, right. but wow. that doesn't mean there's faith. And not only that, the guy speak Russian. Yeah. Yeah. What you going to say? Right. You touch him, he'll... Oh, yeah. You be touching people in other countries yeah. that they can't speak your language and you, you tell them you're trying to bless them. They, they don't get your blessed <laughs> hand off of me. You know, you don't presume because you're anointed. Right. Amen. You don't presume because you're a believer Amen. and you can overstep. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then Pastor Jay made this, these next few statements that I want to share with you, then I'll close this down. He said, I noticed in the ministry of Jesus in the Gospels, not one single time did the person fail to receive healing if they came to Jesus and initiated it. Their faith was on display through their initiative. But there were times, this is still Pastor Jay, there were times when Jesus went to the people in his own hometown and tried to initiate it and couldn't. Yeah. Couldn't get them healed because they weren't initiating it. And he wanted for them to re receive healing and offered it and they didn't take it. And then he told me about a story I'd never heard. And he said, uh, I believe I'm, he said, I think I'm remembering it right. So there may be some details that are, you know, that aren't exact, but this is the import of it. He was telling a story about uh, Brother T.L. Osborne, of course, who was a missionary to many nations. And it, he, Brother uh, Pastor Jay said, uh, T.L. Osborne arrived in the airport and was walking through the airport with some of the pastors that came to meet him that were supporting him in that crusade. They had put out big advertisement on the radio and in the airport with banners and pictures of T.L. Osborne all over the city that he was coming with a healing anointing to minister to the sick. As he walked through the airport, T.L. Osborne said suddenly the healing anointing came into manifestation while he's just walking through the airport and he didn't know why. Within a moment or two, someone behind T.L. Osborne started hollering and screaming, I'm healed, I'm healed. The man had heard the advertisement, saw the pictures of T.L. Osborne, and when he saw the man, he had faith. He had knowledge. He had knowledge of this man of God coming, and he released his faith, but just because T.L. Osborne felt the anointing tangibly was not a sign for him to stop and have a healing service in the airport. You don't always act on what you feel. Right. Right. Note what you feel, but use, yeah. <laughs> yeah. use the leading of the spirit of what to do. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And the man had heard, that, heard the advertisement. He saw the pictures. And when he saw that he arrived and that he was the only white man in the airport, mm -hmm. he concluded this has to be him. Right. And he touched T.L. Osborne from behind and was healed. T.L. Osborne did not initiate that. And although that power came into manifestation, T.L. Osborne didn't have to do anything with it. 
The one believing did something with it. And I've noticed this, the, more, the further I go in the spirit, the more experiences of this I have. So if we're, if we're in the flesh too much, we'll have less of it. Amen. Uh, I love something Pastor Jay pointed out in Acts chapter five. And you, you need to go back and read it later, but we can't read the whole passage for time's sake. In Acts chapter five is the multitudes uh, were healed as the shadow of Peter passed by. Remember, he was coming, they went and got all of the sick and they laid them out in the street in the shadow of him passing by. Well, the religious leaders did not congratulate him. They pulled him before the council, imprisoned him. And while they're in prison, an angel comes and opens the door and stand, go, said, go stand in the temple and tell, speak the words of this life. Yeah. So they go out preaching and when they go to pull them out of jail the next morning, they're not there. Right. And they said, the ones you imprisoned, they're out at the temple preaching. So they hauled them back before the council and threatened them not to do that anymore. Right. And this is one statement that Peter made to that council, he said, we are his witnesses of these things. He's talking about Jesus. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. And I love something Pastor Jay said. He said, this passage says to me that the anointing of the Holy Ghost gets stronger on those who obey him. Amen. Amen. Because Peter said, so the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. He's not talking about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. He's talking about the manifestations of those miracles that happen. He, you have to know the context. He wasn't talking about people being filled with the right. Spirit. Right. He's referring to the context of that shadow. Right. Yes. That anointing yeah. that went out from a radius yeah. from him and yeah. raised up the sick. Amen. And he said, I was obeying God. Amen. You're telling me not to do it. And I was obeying God because I obeyed God. The anointing was strong on me. That's right. Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise sometimes, like I said, sometimes you have to experiment with some of these things. Yeah. Now, for example, I would know by word of knowledge that there were healings taking place and you might have seen I'd be in a service and I'd say maybe somebody's elbow's being healed or so, so, because I'd get the word elbow. So I'd say, who needs a healing in their elbow? For a long time, I'd say, come up here and I'll lay hands on you. Why? Because I was used to laying hands on people. And sometimes you can sense that anointing. So you think I'm just supposed to lay hands on people. So I would do that and I realized I'm getting worn out. I'm preaching. And then that, ta that tangible anointing going through you, it, it makes a draw on your strength. And it's almost to the point where you got thought, I hope there's not a lot of healings we call out tonight. <laughs> you know, just for strength, pur strength purposes, you know, because I got to preach in the morning and tomorrow night, you know, whatever. And so then when Brother Richard came, I noticed he didn't say who needs it. I noticed he didn't call him forward. I noticed when he had a word, he would say, if, if it were elbow, he'd say, God is healing your elbow right now. I wouldn't. So I said, wait a minute. God hooked me up with him. I better be a student. Let me try it the way he does it. See, you got to experiment. So I thought, I'm going to do it the way he does it next time. He's got more experience in this flow than me. Right, sure. So I thought, okay, the next time that word of knowledge comes in the church, I'm going to do it the way he does it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't say who has a problem with your elbow. I would say somebody's elbow is being healed. Mm -hmm. Just receive it right there. Yeah. And then I'd start calling out something else. Yeah. I would always ask out the end, who, who in here can tell the difference in their body? I notice at least double. Right. We're seeing results than those I'd laid hands on. So I saw, even though the anointing is tangible, I still wasn't getting the amount of results yeah. with that tangible anointing by laying hands on them as I was by just doing it by word of knowledge and by words. Then I wasn't as tired. Yeah. I just call it out and I was getting more results. You have to find out what gets the results. Very good. Praise the Lord. Are you helped in this? Yes. So when God had me to invite Brother Richard here, what a help it was to me to observe his flow. Now, I'm not saying that you, you go out and you automatically do it the way somebody else does it. 
But I'm saying this, it seemed to me, when you're laboring over a certain flow, evidently there's another way to carry that flow out. And I was laboring over that flow in the sense of it was drawing a lot out of me. And I thought, surely there's another way I can do this better. And then when Brother Richard came and was doing it so skillfully, I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. So it does matter who you connect to. It does matter who you look to as an example. Because it could have taken me years of doing it the the laborious way because just because I thought if I sensed it in my hand, it had to be my hand. Now, don't misunderstand me. If God tells me to do the hands, I'll do that. But I noticed this when it comes to word of knowledge, it doesn't necessarily stay. It flashes. Why is it flash? Because it's not by the laying on of hands that the power is going to be administered to them. It's through that word of knowledge, the gift of the spirit. And they had released their faith. Amen. Are you helped tonight? Praise the Lord. That's all I know about that. (laughs) I don't know about that. (laughs) Told you all I know about that. Amen. Because really, I assumed by listening to my husband, because he referred to that anointing so much in connection with healing, I assumed that all tangible anointing was for healing. Yeah. That's really it's not true. Amen. In my life, it's not true. Yeah. I also notice it's, for, it's in connection with prayer, it's in connection with angels, other manifestations and stuff. Well, praise the Lord. Stand with me to your feet. Praise the Lord. Father, how do you want me to do that? Let's just lift up our hands and worship the Lord. Father, We worship you. Thank you for your word. We're learning. We're learning. We're learning. Thank you for the help. Thank you, Father. The important thing, Father, is that we minister in the power of the Spirit. These spiritual things are not, (laughs) it takes experience with these things to be able to articulate some things. So thankful for all the men who have gone before us that led us through example. Thank you for those examples. We'll be good students. We'll pay attention. We'll study these things. But Father, we thank you that there's even light for our era. And so we say we're hungry for them. We're hungry for the light that we need to walk in this era, not ever discounting or dismissing what's been brought through previous eras, but adding to it in this era. We say we're hungry for it. Hallelujah. Just raise up your hands and let's just worship the Lord. All the minister's children, if you're in here and you're a minister's child, come up here and I'll have the guys move this. ages. When I say children, I don't mean toddlers only. If you are here and you are a daughter, a son of a minister, to say something to the ministers and to the children and that is this God did not put your parents in one flow for you to go in a different flow God is it says he's the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob they were all carrying on the next the next leg of the race So that means pay attention to where your parents feed and you feed there. God's not changing your flow. He doesn't raise you in one flow so that when you get older, you can switch flows. 
So just know that. You don't get on, on, on YouTube and find somebody else who's popular and make them your flow. They're not your flow. The flow is going to begin with the one in authority over you. What flow did God have them in? He's already showing you your flow. Don't get confused. Don't get sidetracked and taken off course. Pay attention to where your parents feed because God is authoring divine direction for future generations. When he t hooks your parents up to a certain place, and I'm not saying that about me hooking up to this ministry. I'm saying wherever God hooks your parents up, he intends for you to be familiar with that flow. And I would encourage parents as much as you can, bring your children to the same meetings you go to so they can get, the, they can get impartations like you get. But if you leave them at home and they're never around the flow you're around, then it's going to, they're going to get interested in something else. And so it's your job to keep them around as much as you can. And I understand kids are in schools in different parts of life, but I'm saying as much as you can. Understand they need to be around what you're around so they can operate what you're operating in. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have Stephen and Morgan come and lay hands on these. Hallelujah. You know, one thing about my children is they've never expressed, if they've ever thought it, they've never expressed it to me, that they had to have their own ministry. That they wanted to start something on their own apart from ours. Now, I'm not saying that every ministry, all the children will always work together with the parent, but don't have the mindset, you gotta have your own success. Your success is helping somebody else succeed and that begins first at home. Amen. Don't find your worth by having your own. Find your worth by serving where God tells you to be. Amen. And take the head start that your parents gave you by not starting all over again in your own and then it's hard. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. We go ahead and bring this back. We thank you, Father. Father, we're learning. 
we thank you. We thank you for this classroom that we can come to. Thank you that people are hungry to know and hungry to be skillful. You know, I'm reminded, you have probably read after John Alexander Dowie, and you can't discredit the miracles and what was deposited as an example in the body of Christ. And he would take his congregation and they would go to whole communities. And I mean, they'd get a train load of them and they'd go to a community and have a revival because the people that worked with him had been taught how to cooperate with what God was doing. So it does matter that it's more than the ministers know how to cooperate with the anointing. Those present need to, you need to know how to function with your pastor, know how to, know how the anointing works through them. Learn it. Learn how the anointing works through your pastor so that you can hook up and help your pastor go further and what he's anointed for and not just sit there and and wait for the service to start, you know? But you gain skill with uh, cooperating and assisting your man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we're so grateful. We're so, so grateful. Just lift up your voice and worship the Lord. Mastoria da Bashanga Taporia da Bessi Kiki Mandria da Bostoria da Bacaria da Bostoria da Basti Kiki Manjaria da Bostoria da Basti Kiki Mashtakaria da Bostoria da Basse Kiki Mashtikia da Bostokria da Besti Kiki Pastor Noel, come up here and just follow what's in your spirit. Uh, this year, Pastor Nancy prophesied about uh, see and say and see. Uh, Oh, especially in ministers. The uh, only great example I can say to you is Jeremiah, chapter 1. The Lord said, he was in the spirit. It's we, he was in the spirit. He said, Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah has to say it what he's seeing. It's my heart to say to you before Pastor called me that we are now in the place of the flow of the spirit of seeing and knowing. And the Lord said, it doesn't make sense what Jeremiah saw. He said, I see an almond tree. Remember that? It doesn't make sense, but he has to say what he sees. It even it doesn't make sense. A seating pot. I mean, I just don't have the word right now, but you can see. But he has to say what he sees. This is the time of saying and seeing, and it's it's time now because I, a hallelujah. I'm just a moko, yeah, I'm gonna get into the spirit so we can, I can know, I can see something. Amen, huh? You know, you we have a, we, our spirit can say, see things, say it. And God said, I will hasten my word to perform it. That's what the time we are in now. When you see in your spirit and say, He'll perform it. The hunger you get into the spirit to see, the hunger, the hunger to see the plan, the purpose. I I I I saw 
hati remo rodo lepreke shika yuto ah oh yeah yeah ah uh, yeah I see that Lord ha aha yes Lord I aha yes Lord ah oh 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 oh, oh yes 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 Lord ha <laughs> ha aha yes Lord I see I see in my spirit angels angels multitudes <laughs> Multitudes of angels ministering alongside ministers. <laughs> Especially those that have a healing anointing. But for his people, the longing of God. For his people. For his people. I see it. I see, I see, I see. Ah, oh, yes, Lord. Oh, oh. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. Mm, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. I, 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 I see it, Lord. Ah. Yes, Lord. Ha ha. Whoa. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, there's a degree uh, some of us ministers are operating, uh, but there will be an impartation tonight. I see. <laughs> I see. Uh, oh, uh, uh, yes, look. Uh, yes, see, Pastor. I see pastor, Pastor Nancy. I'm not instructing my pastor. I love my pastor. But I see, I see pastor laying hands on the ministers. And the greater flow of the spirit of seeing and knowing will begin to flow. Ha ha. Yeah. Ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ha ha. Yes, Lord. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh ho. 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 Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. Uh huh. Mhm. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh my Lord. Ha ha. Yeah. Yeah. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh yeah. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes. Pastor, now he will hasten his word to perform it. As you lay hands on all of us ministers, the spirit of seeing and knowing will be in a greater flow. We'll be in a greater flow. In your private time, uh, ha ha. You will see it and you will speak. It. This is how the miracles will work in a greater way, in a greater measure. You'll see it and God will move. God will flow. The power of God will flow. The miracle power of God will flow. Uh, whatever you, He will hasten. It will, oh my God, it will be a spirit of acceleration. But you got to say what you see. You got to let, uh, oh, oh, live uh, in that place in the spirit for us to see it. Amen. Jesus, we thank you for that which we have received. We purpose to be faithful stewards, but not only faithful stewards, good stewards, skillful stewards. So we look to the divine help that is always ours. We thank you for it. Thank you for making us a blessing that we may be a greater blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you don't want to miss in the morning. Don't want to miss tomorrow night. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, turn around to somebody before you're dismissed and say, his plan, it gives me the best life. And you can be dismissed. God bless you.